What's up? Ryan Wynn here with another episode of Late Night Inks. And tonight we have a very special episode. We have Cable as our guest, and this is Cable after Rob and Todd. This is inspired and based on and swiped from Cable's first appearance in New Mutants 87, penciled by uh, Rob Liefeld, and inked by Todd McFarlane. Tonight we are going to be inking this, because this is an ink-along, and if you'd like to ink along the link is in the description below we're going to be using our trusty Raphael 8404 size 2 we are using Rapidograph Black India ink Whew. get in focus camera come on and we are dipping our brush two-thirds into our ink wiping it on the inside of our jar or on some scrap paper to sharpen it up and I'm gonna actually get my brush pretty loaded up with ink here because we're going to do some big beefy contour lines to start off uh, start off the show and uh, here we go so when we're doing these big arcs like this uh, these are big lines to start with but I have been warming up as you should have been as well so when we do a big arc like this uh, we line up our arm right to the center of it kind of line up see where your where your wrist wants to take you but keep your wrist centered bring it back that's where we want to go line it up and bam and go a little heavier on the underside of these these are his big big old schmolder pads boom and we can put in a little separation there and then we're going to, what are we going to do next? We're going to shoot across on his, oh, I think this, this camera angle might be too close. I think it's like, let's see, let's pull back a little. Because the, the lens is auto-focusing weird. Sorry about that, guys. All right, I think this will be better. All right, I'm acting like this is live or something. All right, so we are going to line up this long shot. No X-Men pun intended, <clears throat> but is another single shiny eye X-Men character. Long shot's actually my favorite X-Men character. We'll do uh, we'll do a long shot for me someday soon. Now this one, this one is for somebody on the mailing list uh, because if you've not signed up on the mailing list. Uh, you were not asked to uh, prompt a character when we were getting set up for the Hamrella campaign. We asked everyone uh, that signed up, we said, hey, give us a character to draw. If I pick your character, you get this piece of original art. And uh, I got the list blindly from my assistant, just a list of characters. So I've slow, uh, slowly been working my way through that. All right, making sure dry, 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 dry. A little wet point there, but we can avoid that. I'm going to do his big old beefy chin next. We're going to follow around on his jaw. And I kind of like to work from the jaw out sometimes. Um, instead of going all the way around, I wanted to make sure that I got that exactly the way I wanted to, and then I'm going to work off that chin. Right now we're gonna do ears. Now my creative connection, 
or let's see, my personal connection to this character in this cover is I was uh, the target audience. I was 13 or so, yeah, about 13 uh, the year this came out. Louis Simonson writing, uh, X-Men 87, uh, Rob Liefeld on art. And uh, Rob went on to form Extreme Studios, where my first uh, inking mentor and first studio mate, Danny Mickey, uh, was his inker on Youngblood. And then he transitioned over to being the uh, Spawn inker, <coughs> excuse me, over at Capullo, which was uh, McFarlane, Todd McFarlane's studio. And then I ended up working for, for Danny for many, many years uh, as we trucked through uh, some later issues of Spawn. Uh, my first issue was 104. Um, I just found a copy of it while cleaning up my studio and going through or, or organizing the comics because I've been doing that slowly. Ooh, almost put my hand right in the wet spot on the ear. Um, so I was thinking, oh, I should do some kind of like live hangout where we go through my uh, sort of my some of my early books, stuff like that. Anyways, let me know what you guys think or what ideas or questions you might have about something like that. All right, so we've got our contours, we've got our head. Look at that giant, giant chin, those giant shoulders. All right, what next? I almost feel like we should do the shine of the eye next. I'm not quite ready to do the hair. So I'll sharpen up the brush a little more here. It's a little too, a little too wet there. And I am going to, let's see, we're going to start right about here. And I'm going to go in on all these. You do not have to go in. You can go thick to thin. Maybe, maybe we'll switch it up a little. Maybe we'll switch it up a little. But I am going to go a little heavier on the undersides and go thin on the top. Almost like it's a cardboard cutout. Uh, I know it's made of light, but I kind of like the dimensionality that this gives the piece. A little something I learned from Joe Weems who will probably say he learned it from Matt Banning. <clears throat> it's Name Drop City here tonight, folks. All right, those of you that have been participating, uh, thank you so much. We had some great participants on last week's, uh, with last week's Batgirl. And we will be sharing those on tonight's episode. And then uh, next week's episode, I have a bunch to catch up on. My, my buddy David Hainer has a bunch uh, to, that he had sent in. Um, that again, when I was telling you guys, I had friends that I, I forgot about because they were just through the DMs. So we, uh, I am going to be getting to that email. Um, going to make the participants either email or do a hashtag because I am bad at collecting them individually. Uh, through DMs, <clears throat> and I, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know I've missed some, uh, and I hate doing that. All right, so there, now we have the eye glow all done. Wow. So what next? What would you guys want to do next? Let's see. Uh, my brush has kind of a good uh, amount of ink on it for doing some of this, uh, not so much rendering, I guess it's some rendering, just breaking up where his collarbone is. I do it sort of very simple, uh, just hint at stuff like that with a few lines. Uh, you can do two or three lines. I, I usually try to keep it to like three because that just kind of has a a good little flow to it stuff like that and we'll go a little heavier with a few more lines um, under this shoulder muscle here and for these uh, this is part of the neck muscle all 
Almost forgot that on the side. There we go. Whew. Whew. Messed up right in front of you guys. Yeah, so Cable's a weird character. I had started reading X-Men somewhere around issue 210, I think it was. I believe John Romita Jr. was on the cover of the art. Maybe, I don't know. I don't remember right now, and of course you guys know I don't do any research for these episodes, even with my own memory. Um, let's see, we're going to keep working on, on these down here right now. Get my hand warmed up to get go do up and do the hair and then the face. Um, so in issue, I think it was 200, uh, 199, 200, something like that, um, Nate Summers was born. But they didn't have a big plan for him to be Cable or anything like that. And then when they introduced Cable in New Mutants 87, um, I'm pretty sure at the time, even when it came out, they didn't have plans right away for him to be that person, that character. Uh, it just kind of worked out that way. You guys will be able to fill me in on where I'm incorrect there. Again, you don't come here for the facts. You come here for the slick inks, yo. All right, we're going to do his awesome chin cleft. Three lines up. <clears throat> excuse me. And three lines over. Just like that. And uh, dry, dry, dry. Everything's drying quick today. All right, now we are going to go in. And uh, I'm going to do the little reflection in his eye. You know what? First we're going to do his upper eyelid. So we have sort of uh, an anchor spot to uh, take these lines of the eye to. We'll do this. Get the underside of that eyebrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now we're just going to do like a little reverse C shape. I'm going to hold the brush upright so I can maintain um, how much of the brush is touching the paper and we want very very little of the brush we want the sharpest point and you can get a little heavier now as you come around and then do the same thing but a little heavier and you can go or a little uh, we're going to do a bigger circle for the pupil and you can bear down a little bit more and it's the same move if you're using um, a marker or a pen you just won't get the bend and you don't actually have to worry about the bend so here we are going to all right find our arch for this eye and probably do it in two pieces like that and then three pieces there we go so i wanted to beef up that part and we'll get the little doohickey where the eye goes in towards the nose. And then we're going to go heavy on this under lid. Under lid, that's what it's called, huh? Alright, for under the eyelid we can get a little bit brush strokey. And break it up where the scar is. Because one cool shiny eye... Uh, one shiny eye was not cool enough. They had to have a scar eye, too. And, man, I am I put way fewer wrinkles on my version of Cable than Rob and Todd's first version. And when I was 13, I thought Cable had to be 60 because he looked like my grandpa. He did not look like my dad. And not that my grandpa was like, oh, super buff shoulder dude, but my grandpa was wrinkly and leathery and white haired like that and I just figured it was a, a ripped 60 year old just never stopped going to the gym or fighting evil in the future alright so we can bounce the brush a little here for the scar tissue and you can do whatever you want to remember I'm, I always want to see your take on it you don't have to trace what I did you don't have to try to make me happy with it looking like my inks or anything like that. I want to see what you guys do. So now we're going to 
to get into the face a little bit more. Then we'll do the hair, I think. I was going to do the hair first and the face last, but I'm already cruising on the hair. I do like to outline me some eyebrows. Some people hate that. Um, especially because I'm going to go in and render the hairs. I'm not going to go solid black, but I kind of like doing that. So It's my style, bro. Leave me alone. I'm still working on it. Yeah, I did catch myself uh, almost getting a little Todd-ish with um, and Rob-ish with the pencils. Uh, I did ink in the image style for many, many years. It's what I was uh, known for. That's what I was best at uh, for a long time. Uh, but it was not ever a style I was actually a super big fan of. Um, those guys, the image guys kind of lost me after a few issues on their books uh, when the stories were not all that great. Um, so I fell off pretty quick. Um, but then years and years later, it was it was uh, sort of a, the inking style. I, I really liked the inking style. So it was always really funny. I uh, rarely ever tried to draw like any of the people I was inking. That was like a separate thing. The inking was its own challenge job kind of uh, what do you call it craft and drawing and penciling was something something different so I, I tend to be a much cleaner brush artist and I don't mean cleaner as in better I just mean I, I don't I don't get all nitty-gritty and dirty with my my work I, I did do that a lot when I worked on spawn uh, after that even when I worked on the darkness I had I was, I was pretty clean with my my nib work but yeah I caught myself a few times because uh, it kind of kind of took me into uncanny valley with the with the, the face and stuff it wasn't looking quite like my work and it wasn't looking like their work and I uh, had to do some erasing and some some fixing all right here you want to do this side first on this little fold um, it's in front of these two so I would do three this way and then two little things that way because he's he's moving his lip lips that way with his jaw all right so always lining up our shot um, yeah so anyways I even I I fell off, like, kind of the the Jim Lee stuff on X Men kind of kind of ruined me for X Men. Um, getting rid of my my favorite character Psylocke and bringing in that whatever version they have now. <clears throat> Never liked that version, so I don't know. I, I didn't keep up with X Men after all that stuff. So, um, but man, Cable's a favorite character of many of my friends. So I'm curious what. Uh, your favorite cable stories are new ones old ones um i did actually hear that like the the current one is something like a clone of the original cable something like that i thought that was kind of weird uh who knows what they got going on over at marvel i don't i don't pay attention um these days all right i almost almost got into a wet point there uh, but yeah do feel free to add shadows or render however you want to do if you want to make it look more Todd or Rob go for it um, use my pencils as the basis use those blue lines as just a, a platform for you to launch something awesome from And uh, you do not have to do brush strokes the same way I do. Sometimes I, I throw my lines that curve this way. Uh, sometimes I throw lines that are curved this way. Um, that kind of stuff does kind of just take time to, to figure out what you're comfortable with. Everybody's different. I mean, I worked with, uh, you know, Joe Weems and I worked in, in a studio together for years. And... I could try mimicking his exact brush stroke, but it may not, I don't know, it, it wouldn't necessarily always achieve the, the same line where 
if I threw a little bit differently, I could get the same line, but I had to do it a different way. So, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of tricky. It's, uh, inking's a weird physical art form. That's why I, uh, that's why I always use sports references for things. Like uh, lining up your shot and stuff like that. Like the way I was taught in basketball was um, you visualize where the ball is going to go, whether you're passing or shooting, and you you line it up. Like I was saying when we did these, you you line up your shot, so you almost imagine yourself making making the shot um, before you take it, or the pass before you make it. All right, let's do, I forgot about his uh, cool white glowy eye in here. The brush is perfect for that. There we go. We got a few. We have his jaw, his super strong jaw line to do still. And... Now here, if you're working digitally or traditionally, you can either break up the lines like this, or you can draw right over those shadow lines and then either cut it out or mask it off, however, however you want to do it. But that's that's how I'm going to do it on this one. We're just gonna we're just gonna break them up around there with the brush like that. Coming closer for you. All right, 21 minutes, not bad. Trying to be done within 10. And you do not have to ink along at my hyper speed. Uh, you can ink at your own pace. Come back and check on the video. See how I did something before you do it. These are coming out a little dry for me, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna roll with it. And we've got a little more rendering in the neck here. This tendon and the muscle meat the collarbone. We'll go lighter there. And then we've got this cast shadow. And we're going to go nice and heavy with these brush strokes. Or you can go solid black if you want. This is just kind of one of the ways I do it. And we'll lighten up as we go over these neck muscles. And then get a little heavier again to close it out. There we go. Uh, we are not going to do a cast shadow on the nose, but we are going to do some little extra dits here. These little renders kind of give some dimensionality and also kind of a throwback to the original uh, artists on the piece. We're going to do the hair. I'm going to do the hair with um, a marker in a few minutes. And uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do eyebrows now. Now, on the eyebrows, I'm going to change direction. I'm going to pull in here with my, pe with my brush. You can do the same with your pen. You can do it however you want. But I'm still lining up my shot. Like I'm ending at a point and then swinging, you know, I'm picking my end point, swinging back, and then striking down with the brush. That way you always have control over where you are stopping. We get heavier as we go in here. Fill it in a little more. And I'm going to do some wispies this way. Have him get a few long ones out there. It's wild, you know. He's he's not super well well kept. He spends most of his time polishing his robot arm. So then we can fill this one in mostly black, so it creates a little more contrast against the the white of the the eye shine. And here at the end, we'll break it up a little. There we go. All right, now we need that to dry. So 
So I don't want to hit that. All right, so let's go in and do the hair curls. I'm going to do this underside, and then I'm going to do a thin like that. And then I'm going to take this one and just do like that. And you just, just build the hair pieces. That's what I always think of them. Is they're, they're pieces. They're all these just individual, like this little curl. That's, that's just that one little thing. You don't think of it as a, a hole yet, you know, when you're, when you're inking. You can just do bit by bit. And try to make them clean. You don't have to follow mine exactly. Like I always say, just use mine as guidelines. I'm not I'm not super picky about these on the ink alongs myself. I just try to have have fun with them. Think of them almost like as a as a convention sketch. Of course I'm always trying to you know, you always want to do your best on everything, but you don't, it's, it's not something you have to, I don't know, I, I try to, I try to teach people how not to get stressed out inking or with art, like, all of this part of it should actually be kind of fun. Alright, I'm going to do a little bit of outlining on his forehead here. I uh, don't want to do a hard contour line, that, that tends to kind of look weird. Same with the hair on the outside, you want to have some broken spots and then some solid spots. And uh, this is where my work tends to have somewhat of an animation flair to it. I like looking at anime hair and the way they do hair and animation and stuff like that. So I do steal a little bit from that side of things to bring into my comic work. All right, it's not looking so bad. I'm trying to be done in the next five minutes, but also not trying to rush. So from here on out, we're gonna do brush, wispy brush lines. These can be thin to thick, thick to thins. Uh, this is where his hair is black. I'm going to come in and do some different stuff there, as you can see in the pencils. And you can break the outside line with, with some of these wispy lines. And they can have dull points or sharp points, however you want. Just kind of keep them moving in that hair direction. And it will read as hair. Now this is coming up off his forehead, so we can go heavy on some of the undersides. Kind of give a little dimension, as always. And again, this is where my, my style kind of goes a little different direction from Todd or Rob's. And that old Marvel slash image style. But I did learn uh, about curling hair and everything uh, from my time on Spawn because there's a lot of uh, similarities to, you know, smoke and things like that. So there's certain moves and techniques that come into play. Blah, to be blah, blah, blah. Let's see, let's these bad boys going. I'm having fun with this one. Uh, I say that because I'm coming into the towards the end here and I'm just really getting warmed up on it now. But that's always the case. That used to be the case on single issues too. If the, a new artist or something, if we were just working on one issue together, by the end of the issue is when I was like, Ah, oh, now I feel like I got it. Now I'm ready to start. Okay, we're going to do the dark spots on his hair, which I'm going doing a little bit stylistic, a little bit of the Ryan Wind touch here. Uh, 
where we do some things that uh, may not be rendering that you would normally use on hair. So again, you do not have to do it that way. You can go solid black or follow the direction of the hair, which is what an, any normal artist would do. But I don't know, I've been liking doing this kind of stuff uh, this year, last year, whatever. So yeah, he has these like black bands in his hair where it hasn't gone fully white. So I want to make it, make it uniform here. And again, these are similar brush strokes that I used on the eyebrows, but my brush is very wet with ink now instead of how dry it was when I did the the eyebrows. Alright, and then I am going to break out my Zebra Sensations marker that I usually use uh, for the signature. Um, we also use it for, I've done ink-alongs with it, and I really like those kind of pens. Uh, some of you use a similar one from Tombow. I'm going to break that out, not just for the signature, but we are going to do the, the stubble. All right, first, let's take a quick look. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Take a swig of water for me. Grab our marker. You can grab yours. I gotta put my brush down. All right. So I usually, um, even if the penciler hasn't done it, I sort of like to have a rhythm to the hair. And I do like them to be blunt lines. You can wisp them however you want. You can mix it up. But I like there to almost be like a wave pattern. But then you throw, you know, the random one a little longer here or there and you kind of put the hairs in between each other like that and then they can also uh, leave the body here a little and then you can have little ones coming poking over the back and we'll do the same with his mighty chest hair because you don't want the, it to be too uniform like I am following an arc here but I'm kind of Twisting my hand a little and getting letting it be a little random in the direction the hairs lie. Now, if your style is to have those be cleaner and more uniform, then uh, yeah, go for it. I'd like to see what your take on Cable's chest hair. Show me your Cable chest hair, folks. Just like that. Make sure this is all dry. Okay. So I can't wait to see some of you guys, uh, some of your takes on this and see how some of you guys do your thing. Oh, that was a little too uniform on that row. Let's fix that here. There we go. There we go. You can either let me know uh, during the live chat while I'm here. Uh, I am hanging out in the live chat for the pre-recorded video. That's how these work. So you can always come and comment question there or leave a comment in the comments down below or question and I will get back to you. But I want to know and hear if there's any cable books you recommend reading. Uh, I'm not big on Marvel anymore, but I'm always curious what people are into because I do like to support my local comic shop. My nephew's into Marvel Comics, and he hasn't read much of Cable either, so he was curious. Uh, so let us know. All right, we got a few more uh, rendering lines here. We're going to go some thick to thins. And some diamond lines. It didn't come out as diamond lines, I thought. This is, this is a particular brush pen is uh, I guess it's starting to give up a ghost on me 
see some thin to six on this one here. Let's get the diamond lines I wanted. There we go. There we go. And then we'll sign it. You can trace over my name here. And then we'll add the little, you can do this in your own writing too if you want. After Rob in Todd. Uh, and then sign your name here. If you do send this to me or at me on uh, as at Ryan on Ryan Wynn on Twitter, uh, go ahead and do your at. Sorry, it's getting all mixed up. Do your at right here so it's nice and clear. And when I share it in a video, we can see it. Um, so we'll give this one more pass before I sign off because we went five minutes longer than planned. But I think we had some fun. I think we came up with a cool cable image. And I can't wait to see what you guys do. So, uh, Hammerella description, or link in the description. Uh, all the links in the description. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, there should be one for the brush, one for Hammerella, one for uh, Death Curse. We have our uh, upcoming 24 hour comic that we're going to start in three hour chunks on the first on the Death Curse channel, 5 p.m. Eastern. So until then, until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and take it easy. Stupid cat.